Hello everyone and welcome to Cricketing with Delanda. It's me again, Delanda, and thank you so much for joining me today. If you hadn't noticed, I'm wearing my shirt that I made with puff vinyl. This is after one wash. So someone asked, does it stay puffy? So yes, it's still puffy and it has been washed one time. Okay, I'm super excited to share this project with you because this is a design that I use that I put two designs together. This design commemorates Juneteenth. Juneteenth is an important milestone in American history. It commemorates the date, June 19th, 1865, which is celebrated by people all over the world. It commemorates the date um, uh, two and a half years after the Emancipation Proclamation and it is coming up this weekend. So we'll be celebrating two holidays this weekend, Juneteenth and Father's Day. So I'm super excited to share this with you as, as I've stated. This is a design that I purchased from Design Bundles, which is the butterfly. And the Juneteenth, the word, was uh, available in Cricut Design Space. And I want to show you my full process for putting these two files together. I am in love with how this came out. You know what I'm going to say. What am I going to say? I love it. I love it. And so without further ado, let's look at the materials you will need in order to create a design just like this. The materials I'm going to use for this project include my Cricut Explore Air 2, green standard grip mat, my purple pin pin weeding tool, and four colors of HTV Ront heat transfer vinyl. I'll be using my StarCraft 8-in-1 swing away heat press and the design that I purchased from Design Bundles. And I'll also use parchment paper in between each press. So without further ado, let's head on over and get our file downloaded. So I'm on the Design Bundles Plus membership site. And the first thing I'm going to do is download this layered 3D paper cut file of this Juneteenth butterfly. And um, even though it says it's for paper cuts, I can look right here and see that I could also use this file as an SVG. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm going to click download. I'm going to click download now. And on my screen, it, this downloaded file is in the bottom left corner of my screen where I'm hovering. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to click extract all. I'm going to click browse. I'm going to just navigate to my desktop and I can, you know, give this a new folder. I can say, I can call it Juneteenth Butterfly. And I can select this folder and click extract and get the files downloaded here on my desktop. And when I double click on the folder, I see all of the various options for the file. I'm going to close this out now and go to Cricut Design Space. I am in Cricut Design Space and what I'm going to do now is just go to a blank screen, a new screen, and I am going to click upload. I'm going to go to upload image. I'm going to browse and navigate to the file that I just saved on my desktop. I'm going to download this one that says butterfly and sunflower. And I'm uploading the file that is the SVG. It's the one that says Microsoft Edge. I'm going to click open. And it is a cut image. I'm going to click upload. And I'm going to select it over here and click add to canvas. Now that it's on my canvas, I can see that this file has four layers. One, two, three, four. There's a black layer, green, red, and yellow or gold, gold-ish. And the next thing I'm going to do, because I want to add a word to this, I absolutely love this file. I love it. I think it's so beautifully done and I'm so pleased that I can combine this file with one of the files that is within Cricut Design Space. So what I'm going to do from here is go over to images and I'm going to do a search for Juneteenth. I'm going to click my search um click the option to search and look through these to find the word juneteenth um and see if there's one that i like 
And when I looked through these the other day, because I kind of played with this before I started this project, I like the way Juneteenth is at the bottom of this, um, this lady right here. And so what I'm going to do is select this file and add it to my canvas. And what I'm going to do from here is kind of just crop, take the word Juneteenth away from the the lady because I don't want all of this. So what I'm going to do, I can see this is also a layered file. So the red piece of this file, I don't want it. I'm going to delete that part. I don't want the black piece of this file. I'm going to also delete that. And for the rest of this, I am going to grab a shape over here in the shapes panel and I'm going to grab this rectangle right here and I am just going to unlock it and resize it to um, start to slice these pieces away of this file that I don't want. So right now I'm just putting it on top of this file and I have to be careful about this because part of this T is connected right there. So I'm going to do this in two parts. So I'm going to stretch this out um, as much as I can. And I will select, uh oh, <laughs> I will select this whole thing. I'll select both parts of this and I will click slice. Remember, you can only slice when you have two layers two layers selected at one time. I'm going to delete those two pieces or three pieces. And then I'm going to go over this again. I'm going to grab a shape. Um, and this time I'm going to grab a, let's see if I grab this triangle and see if I can get it with that. And I am going to just put it on top and I'm going to unlock it and stretch it out. Being very careful about that. Let me kind of just move it just a little bit. I don't want to cut off any part of that J. And I'm going to select this again and I'm going to slice it and delete these parts that I don't need again. And I'm going to get rid of the rest of this. I'm going to grab another little shape. Um, it doesn't matter what I grab at this point. Um, I'll grab that. That was way too big, but it's okay. So all I'm doing is just slicing out the parts that I don't need. And I still want to get this part right here that's above that T. So I'm going to grab one more shape. Um, I think this half circle will get it. Um, so I can just kind of rotate that. Perfect and select both of these and slice it. Now, when you're working on this project, you might find an easier way, a faster way, a better way. Do what works for you because that's actually what I'm doing. I'm doing what is going to work for me. Okay, so now that I have this file pretty much the way I want it, this butterfly is still grouped, so it's going to stay together. Let me make sure I delete this. Um, I don't need the, that part. Okay, so... Um, what I'm going to do is ungroup this butterfly for one second. And I am going to select, let me put that back. I'm going to put the black layer back on top. And I am going to select the, let me get this placed right directly in the center, just like this, because this is what my shirt is going to look like. I am going to... Let's see, I want to align this and I want to center it horizontally. Is that right? Yes, I do. Okay, good. And I am going to select Juneteenth and I'm going to hold my shift key. Then I am going to select the green layer. So I'm going to hold my shift key. I want to select the green layer of this butterfly and I am going to attach those pieces. It moved the green layer to the front. And of course, I don't want the green layer to be on the front, but it does. It's OK. I'm going to move the black layer back to the front just like that. And I'm going to 
group this back together. The red and yellow, I'm going to group that back together and put that on the bottom. I'm going to arrange that to send to the back. And so it's just the way that it was. And then I'll select the whole thing and I'll group it. And now I'll grab a t-shirt template and I'll get my image sized just the way that I want it. So I'm going to be using a women's short sleeve. Mm, I'll use a large shirt for this. And I am going to stretch this out. Um, I'll make it kind of big. I want it to stand out. Uh, I want the width to be, let's see what 11.0 looks like. I think that looks fantastic. Let me make it a little bit bigger so you can see it very well. I love it. I love, love, love it. And now I am ready to click make it. So I should have four layers of four mats. I'm going to have a black mat. I'm going to have a green mat, a red mat, and a yellowish gold mat. And I'm ready to click make it. Okay. And because I'm using heat transfer vinyl, I know that each of these mats will need to be mirrored. So I'm going to just move this down a little bit. I always do that. I'm going to mirror my yellow mat. I'm going to go to my green mat, move it down just a little bit. I'm going to mirror that mat. I'm going to select the black mat, move it down just a little bit, mirror that. And then go to my red mat, move it down just a little bit, and also mirror that. And I'm going to click continue. And it's going to look for my Cricut Explore Air 2. And I am using HTV Rant uh, brand of heat transfer vinyl. And so once I select my base material, I will select Everyday Iron On. And I haven't had a problem cutting this vinyl, so I'm going to just keep it on default pressure. Everything that I'll do from here will be back on the camera. So I'm going to get my gold sheet cut first. This is how I label my heat transfer vinyl. So I just label it with whatever brand it is. Um, share below down how you store your heat transfer vinyl. Do you do it with tape? Do you use slap sticks? Do you use rubber bands? What's your trick? Okay, I'm gonna get my mat cover removed. I'm gonna put the vinyl down with the shiny side on the mat. Grab my brayer. I'll speed the rest of this up. have all four of my mats cut and now I will get them weeded out and maybe you saw on the the video I just did a test to make sure these little stars were cut out now I'll get this weeded out and I will definitely speed this part up I have my four mats and I have my white 100% gilding heavy cotton shirt. I'm going to go ahead and do a pre-press on my shirt. I'm going to fold my shirt in half and I'm going to press it just for about five seconds. My heat press is set to 302 degrees and I'm using the StarCraft 8-in-1 swing away. I'm going to put my shirt on and get a good crease down the middle. Right at about five seconds. And so I have my crease down the middle. Hopefully this is a good view. Now I will um, go ahead and start to press my layers. I'm going to just get each layer tacked down. This is HTV Rot um, heat transfer vinyl. And this vinyl is a cold peel. 
So it's gonna slow it down just a little bit. I'll get started and then I'll speed the video up. I'm just gonna come down about three finger widths from the collar and I will start to get my vinyl pressed down. And I can just use the center of the butterfly to line up my design. This is, and I'm going to use some um, parchment paper and I'm also gonna put Teflon on top of that. The parchment paper will ensure that my that I don't scorch my vinyl and my shirt, and then the Teflon will remove any of the moisture. I'm gonna tack this down for about 10 seconds. So I've let this cool off, now I'm gonna peel it. and press my next layer. That looks really, really good. <laughs> that looks really, really good. So far, I'm impressed with this HTV Rond. I am impressed with this HTV Rond. Okay, I'm gonna press my red layer next. And I will definitely speed this part up. So this is the finished product. And what am I gonna say? I love it. I love butterflies. I love the layering of this file. I love the font, which was not, you know, it was a file that was already in Cricut Design Space. I love the way this turned out. If you found this tutorial helpful, please consider liking the video, subscribing to my channel, and turning on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every single week thank you so much for joining me today and thanks for watching bye